Astronomers have found dozens of potentially habitable planets outside of our solar system. That's dozens of chances to discover the first alien life. Of course, alien life. Now we're getting to the propaganda, getting off of Earth and getting to these super Earths. Look at all the possibilities. Or, you know, plenty of places we could park our first interstellar colonies. But with so many options, how do we know which is best? You might think that most Earth-like planets should be at the top of our list. After all, we've got everything we need, water, land, an atmosphere, and trillions of life forms lapping it all up. But according to a small group of researchers, there are bigger and better planets out there. Oh, there's bigger and better planets out there. Now, first of all, the Earth is not a planet. One of the biggest lies. If you come to this video for the first time, please research it. The whole idea that we're just another planet and billions and trillions of other planets, it's just nothing but to make you insignificant, no value, you're just a speck of dust in the infinite galaxy. But again, this is where the rhetoric gets actually even more interesting when they put videos like this together and talking about super earths, better places to live than what we're on, this desperate notion that we need to get off, not to mention whether there's going to be a meteor shower, if they're going to be hit by asteroids, um, again, the non-stop propaganda with Hollywood that the world's going to come to an end, that we've got to find a new place to get to, it just ramps up with this nonsense that so-called Kepler uh, is discovering uh, with uh, NASA and all these space agencies. Let's continue. They're called Super Earths. Super Earths may be some of the most common planets in our galaxy. Since 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope has discovered about 4,000 exoplanets. 30% of them are super-Earths. So, out of all the exoplanets, 30% of them are super-Earths. Now, understand that the super-Earths are way better than even Earth. Okay, let's, let's forget about the fact that they're lying about space and planets. Just understand this idea that almost everything, 30% of everything that they've discovered out there is better. It's better to be habitable, better for life, better for conditions, better for atmosphere. As we'll continue on with this video, you're gonna see nonstop propaganda when it comes to super Earths. Who would wanna live on Earth when you can live on a super Earth? And a few percent of those super Earths orbit within their host star's habitable zone. That's the Goldilocks zone where the planet's surface is just the right temperature for liquid water. The Goldilocks zone. Not too cold, not too hot. Now, there's a chance some of these super-Earths aren't rocky worlds like Earth. The larger ones could be made out of mostly hydrogen and helium gas like Jupiter and Saturn, which would not be very hospitable for life. But the reality is astronomers are still gathering details as more data comes in. So in the meantime, let's explore what life on a rocky habitable super Earth might be like. Liquid water is just the start. These planets can be almost double Earth's radius and up to 10 times more massive. And all that extra mass is what researchers think could really make super Earths the perfect home. That's because more massive planets have a stronger gravitational pull. Super-Earth Kepler-20b, for example, is nearly double the size of Earth, and it's 10 times more massive. This makes its surface gravity almost three times stronger. That stronger gravity means that the planet can hold on to more air molecules and form a thicker atmosphere, which is great for protecting against harmful space radiation. You know, that radiation, the Van Allen radiation belts that they supposedly went through in the moon landings in the 1960s and 70s that Orion is still trying to figure out with their shielding, saying we got a major problem because we got lots of this radiation. Again, nonstop lies. Let's continue. It also means mountains and hills would erode a lot faster, leaving a relatively flatter surface compared to Earth. Now that might sound boring, but scientists think this could actually spawn dozens of shallow islands all across the planet. So let me go straight. 
A flatter earth is better for life. It's better designed. It's very interesting that they would point this out, saying that these super earths probably are going to be flatter and it will be better for life because apparently flatter is better. Those in turn could be the perfect place for life to form and evolve. Just as biodiversity in Earth's oceans is richest in shallow waters near coastlines, such an archipelago world might be enormously advantageous to life. There's just one problem. Leaving this tropical paradise would be extremely difficult. The escape velocity on Kepler-20b is more than double compared to Earth's, which means either rockets would need more fuel to reach their destinations, like, for example, a mission similar to the Apollo moon landing would require twice the amount of fuel, or rockets would have to carry only a fraction of the payload. For instance, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. The big fake that sent out uh, a car into space that everyone believed was real. Oh yeah, that one? Can launch 50,000 kilograms of payload into Earth's orbit. Whereas it could only launch 40 kilograms into orbit around a super Earth like Kepler 20b. That's about the weight of a German Shepherd. Suffice it to say, leaving a super Earth would be a far greater challenge. So here they go with more propaganda. Obviously, they're trying to get off, but they're saying it's going to be difficult because of the atmosphere, because of gravity, because of all these equations that they put together. But again, you get to see where their agenda lies. This is kind of the place, obviously, in a galaxy that was created out of nothing, that was random. There would be billions of other better choices that we probably wouldn't be the only one. Again, this goes in complete opposition to the Word of God, to the Bible stating that the Earth was created unique and special, and it was perfect in all of its ways for life. God created it. Again, it wasn't created by an accident, by a big bang, created out of nothing. But again, this is what the entire scientism narrative is all about, is reducing us to evolved from the slime, from the water, as they will say, as everything came out of the water. And again, all of the life components and all of the different things need to be in place in order to create life to be better for everyone involved. Again, this is nonstop propaganda where they're continually trying to push us further away from the notion that this is created special. It is unique. And again, God does have a grand design for everything that he has designed. And this idea that we need to get off and they're so desperate with trying to get out there and oh, what do we do about the radiation? I don't know. Why don't you do what the Apollo guys did? They just punched the gas and went right through the radiation. No problem. But yet, since the 60s and 70s, the furthest that they have been, they admit, is like 200 or 300 miles away. The ISS is supposedly 250 miles away. You have all the astronauts claiming that the furthest that they can go is low Earth orbit. That should make anyone kind of do a double take and go, wait a minute, what's going on here? It's going to 2019 almost. And now you've got articles coming out talking about they're going to go to the moon in 10 years. They're pushing it. They're taking you know, $250,000 for these flights to the moon and to space, and yet they push it further and further away. But yet, as long as they can give us this fairy tale science fiction fantasy of being able to populate new worlds, let's go to Mars, let's go to exoplanets that our magical Hubble telescope is discovering. The idea that basically these super Earths, if you actually even start looking into the distance of how many light years they're away, one light year is seven trillion miles. That's trillion with a T. Start understanding how far these distances are and you will see how ludicrous it is to think that a telescope or that any type of lens can see that distance. And yet this is what they completely brainwash the population with, the idea. They have no clue what's going on. They see little things floating and lighting up the sky and yet they tell us exactly what it is and yet they have no clue they tell us that all the stars are other suns and that suns are stars again all of this goes completely in contradiction to the word of god to the bible and if you're coming to this video for the first time and you don't know where you stand on all of this honestly start looking at truly the bible in the sense that you were created unique and special and that the entire war the assault has been against your soul has been against your mind to get you to believe fairy tales, science fiction. Again, we're taught Santa Claus. 
And at a certain age, we're taught, no, Santa Claus doesn't exist. Well, I'm telling you right now, we're taught early on that space exists. And I'm telling you right now, no, it doesn't. Not the way of what we've been taught in the billions and trillions of galaxies and that everything was created out of nothing. Understand that if you're falling for the evolution, Big Bang heliocentric narrative, you are believing that nothing created everything that you see. Look out your window. If you're on a beach, look out. If you're on a mountain, look out and look and see. Do you honestly believe that everything was created out of nothing? The majestic creation that God created, and yet scientism is trying to level it to nothing. An accident, a random mutation, and that is all we are. And we have to get off this planet, as they say, to get to better planets, because this is not the best one there could be. And this obviously ascension to the stars, and to ascend the stars, and to go other places. Again, this is found in Genesis. This is found in the Bible, where man under Satan's governorship, wants us to be like the Most High. And again, it was said that he would try to ascend the stars to be like the Most High. And us trying to get up there, trying to populate new worlds and get off Earth. Again, this is a pathetic attempt to try to get out of here. And we can't. We cannot leave. As Bill Nye said, we are in an enclosed system. There is no place to go. And this is the reality. This is our place. This is our home. And we have nowhere else to go. But yet you'll have NASA making you believe fairy tales and science fiction that we can go to endless planets. Research this. Look this up. Because we're going to see more and more of this with the evolutionary, big bang, heliocentric narrative. They shove in our faces. They teach us as a young child. They tell us that we live on a spinning ball flying through space. And yet no one's ever felt the motion. And yet every scientific experiment to prove the movement of the earth has failed. Look it up. It's startling, but it's true. Yet there is no scientific experiment to conclusively prove that we're moving, that we're spinning, nothing that we can conduct from earth. They'll say, oh, look up in the sky. Look at the stars. Look at all of this. Look at the Coriolis effect. Each one of these things, if you start breaking them down through the scientific method, they are not done through true science and that's what it's all about if you want to believe in science great make sure it's true science not scientism this is nothing but fairy tales and science fiction going to new worlds and super earths like we are not special we need something that's super would they actually claim that these super earths are even special probably because anything to get away from the superior knowledge that earth was created perfectly for man and for everything that exists within and yet they will try to make everyone believe the opposite we're in a war we're in a war against truth we're war against the word of god and destroying the foundations crumbles everything that god has tried to set up but god will reign supreme and again we are seeing this as more people are waking up to the lies of nasa to the lies of scientism and continually watching videos like this where they're trying to tell us there's so many more better places to live in the universe nothing but lies. Take care. I'll come back with a new video real soon. Blessings.